Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, the eighth day of Kislev, which means that tonight, Shabbos, the ninth day of Kislev, will be the day, the birthday, and the yard site of the Mittel Rebbe. So we're going to have a big Fabrengen. On Sunday, of course, the tenth day of Kislev is the Chaga Geula, the day of redemption of the Mittel Rebbe. The Mittel Rebbe, of course, is the son of the Alter Rebbe, second Chabad Rebbe. So let's continue now with the Tanya. Still in the middle of the long essay, essay four in the last part of the Tanya. And where the Alter Rebbe explains about the importance of actual mitzvahs of action and studying the mitzvahs of action. So once again, let's start with tzedakah. Make sure to do it at home. Kedayla tzedakah, shemekarevaz asagiula. So we learned yesterday about the great power that the mitzvahs have when you do a physical mitzvah. And it is much, much greater than just having meditation. And even if it's even though the physical action of a mitzvah seems like it has no emotions to it, no feelings, you don't understand anything, just doing a a physical act, yet this physical act has a great advantage that it connects with the very essence of Hashem. And also when you study the mitzvah, when you study the, the, the halacha, the law of the particular mitzvah. When it comes to the other end, to when you're talking about uh, feelings and emotions and connecting to Hashem, spiritual elevations, this is something that he can only reach as much as a person can reach. And he explained also that even the greatest levels of uh, expiring, that the neshama is, has a close and nefesh connecting to Hashem and expiring from the body, is certainly not even close to the greatness of doing the actual mitzvah. Because that is the purpose of Hashem. That is the purpose to bring godliness down into this world. And today the Alter Rebbe is going to ask that how, he is asking how is it happening? How is it possible that a physical physical object like an esrog that he used the example in Sukkot, you take the citrus for the esrog and you make a bracha and that fruit that you hold in your hand on Sukkot triggers a great light of Hashem which is even greater than whatever levels of godliness that is revealed in the spiritual world. And al is going to ask this question, then we get to the answer. So let's see inside first the question, then we'll get to the answer. Said al Rebbe, but let us understand now, Eich ho'esreg, shu merapach shaloi nivre ruadayin, How an esrek, which derives from the 288 sparks that have not yet been purified, which we explained in the previous lessons, but in the beginning of creation, God created the more powerful spiritual worlds that the, wor that the vessels were not capable of holding, and that caused the shattering of the vessels. And the 288 sparks fell down to the low worlds, to the lowest places. And the and and all of the, these sparks are hidden in the physical world, in the phys, in the different different objects. So and when you take an essay, which is a physical fruit, this contains sparks of this godly light that were hidden in the in the darkness. It's called the Klippas Neige, but it was not refined yet. So how is this esrek that comes from these sparks that was not refined yet? V'chein klaf atfilin, and so too the parchment scroll of the tefillin. You take a piece of skin of an animal, and you write, a, you write the, part, the, the scroll of the tefillin. 
And when you say you make a bracha on this tefillin and you put it on your arm and on your head, you draw tremendous light into the spiritual world. It says, what does it do? This can elicit light into the vessels of Ze'er Anpin and Nukva of Atzilus. As we explained, Ze'er Anpin is, it's called a small face, it's the six attrib attributes. Nukva is the Malchus of Atzilus, of the highest world. Now this level of Atzilus, the world of Atzilus, is a world of godliness, as we said many times. Atzilus is from the word, the word, the world of emanation. Atzilus means it's low, it's close to Hashem. The godliness is there. This world of Atzilus that has already been purified and rectified through the purifying name Ma. This is one of the combinations of the name of Hashem the name Ma, which is 45, so that they are a state of godliness. So the question is, this high spiritual world of Atzillus is already purified and rectified and it has purely godliness. And yet we say that when we do a mitzvah with a physical object, with an esrik, with a tefillin, we add light into these levels of Atzillus. How is it possible? So the answer is, the Alter Rebbe is going to use an example of sowing and planting. When you take a seed, you take a kernel, you sow, you, you plant it into the ground. And what grows is a whole stalk of wheat, a whole tree from what? From that small kernel. That kernel that has no taste, has nothing. It goes into the ground and it rats. And then a whole new tree comes, a whole new tree grows. How is it working? How does it work? And Dalt Rebbe is going to explain that you have what happens is that the seed has in it the source, the root, the godly power from the very beginning of creation, that Hashem said, let the earth grow. So this is something that is in the seed and is in the, in the earth. What the seed does, when, this, when, the, when the, seed, the seed is planted in the ground and it decomposes and it, it opens and it triggers then it triggers and it stimulates that godly power that is hidden in the earth. And why? Because the seed has in it the root, the source also. So this Dal Tareb is using as an example to explain to us that the same thing is true also with the physical mitzvahs. The physical mitzvahs may look physical to our eyes, but there in them there is the root that Hashem planted, the, the essence of Hashem, which comes from the light which is beyond this world. And when you do the mitzvah, or when you study the Torah of this mitzvah, that triggers and stimulates that original power that Hashem invested into this, into this mitzvah, into this physical mitzvah. Says Al Rebbe, in the The analogy for this is the process of sowing and planting. The seed stimulates the power of growth within the soil, which is God's command: Let the earth sprout forth fruit, trees that Hashem said right in the beginning of the creation, and that is something that is always there. And when the seed is planted, this triggers and stimulates this power, this godly power. Mm -hmm. And how is it done? Through the elevation of Mayim Nukvin to its source. So the seed whose source is within the power of growth, 
serves as an arousal from below, from the recipient below to, to the benefactor. Although the seed that is planted can in no way compare to the power of growth, it can nevertheless arouse it, this power, for this is its source. So when you give a physical seed that Hashem, the, in this, the seed has the source of the power of growth, that is why it can arouse this power. Continues the Alter Rebbe, Kacha Moir, Rima Klaf, Vera Esroi, Ad Ruma Mailis, Shushem, Sag, Shalif, Neshvir. In this manner, the parchment of the Tefillin and the Esroi, the citrus fruit of these four species that we make in Sukkot, this arouse unto the loftiest of levels. This is the name Sag. As we explained the last few days, Sag. Is 63 again, again, it's another uh, combination of God's name, the tetragrammaton, when it's spelled out, the yud, yud vav dalad is 20, the hey, hey in hey is 10, so, that, so that's 30, and vav k, vav aleph, vav is 13, and hey in hey is 10. So you have together, you have 63. So this is refer, refers to the name, the godly name, which is above and beyond creation. This is that, it represents that power of that godly energy that was not able to be contained and fell into the vessels. And that is the root of the physical object has the roots into the uh, in this that high level of sag, which precedes and transcends the shattering of the vessels. And which is the very essence of the light of Adam Kadman, the the image, a godly image of, of man before the creation. And this is not like the light which comes in Atzillus, where there is and not merely a reflection, as in the name Ma, which issues from the forehead. So we're saying, he's using this analogy, when you like something that comes from the forehead, the forehead represents something which has, which blocks. The forehead is a block, the skull is a block, so it comes as something that shines through the forehead is not is something that comes from the outside, not to compare to something that comes from the inside, like from the mouth, from the eyes, and so on. So that's what he says that through the physical mitzvah, you connect to the very essence, the very source, and that which tr this what do, you're doing the mitzvah triggers that godly energy. That powerful energy continues. The Alter Rebbe says not only the actual doing of the mitzvah, but also the studying of the laws of the mitzvah. Similarly, the study and careful examination of the laws, the laws re re regulating the mitzv these mitzvahs. The kelim, the zeir rampi this arouse the Chochma bin Adas, the intellectual emo attributes of the ten sephiris of the vessels of Zeir Ampin and Nukva. Ve'ad Ruma Mailas Gamkin, and so upward to the greatest heights. Gamkin, Prinus Chochma bin Adas, Shebesag, including Chochma bin Adas of Sag, the Pnimius Odan Kadmon, and Yoitze Derechein Naim Vechulu which is the inner dimension of Adam Kadman, issuing through the eyes of Adam Kadman. Again, comparing to what he said before, the Ma issues through the forehead, and here the Sag issues through the eyes, which means it represents a much deeper level of, of godly energy. So when you study the Torah, 
is, is you do the, you accomplish similar thing because when you study a positive mitzvah, it's considered like you do the mitzvah. And here says the Alter Rebbe also, this is, may be true when you're talking about positive mitzvahs. But what about studying negative mitzvah? A mitzvah, a prohibition? Is it accomplishing the same thing? Seem, seems like it's not. Because when you study a positive mitzvah, you study the laws of a, a positive mitzvah, it's, it's as if you perform the positive mitzvah. And, the, and performing the positive mitzvah causes this great light to descend. But when you study a negative mitzvah, it's, it's like, uh, you know, what is it? You're not doing. You're not doing anything positive. You're not accomplishing anything, especially if you study a mitzvah which is not, uh, it's not common at all. Adal Terebe says, let's see inside, and all of, of, the, of uh, the foregoing, meaning as to how through the observing of the practical mitzvahs and studying their laws, one attains to the divine name, Sag, that transcends the breaking of the vessels. This is the Ube Mitzvah Saseh. This concerns positive commandments. Avaloi belimud prote ilchis isuloi saseh lechoire. But not, it would seem, it would seem that it's not the case by the study of the particulars of the prohibitions. Particularly those that do not occur in practice at all. For in these cases, we cannot even state that if one remains uh, passive and does not transgress, he is rewarded as if he performs a positive command. That's that is true in in a regular part a negative mitzvah. If a person is a thief and he has a chance to steal and nobody sees, and he changes and says, "No, I'm not going to do it," he's considered he's getting a reward like as if doing a positive mitzvah or any mitzvah for that matter. When a person abstains from doing something which is wrong. It's considered like doing a positive mitzvah. But that would be true. That would be the case when you're talking about a, a mitzvah that uh, something which is relevant, something which is common. But the certain mitzvah, some mitzvahs are not relevant at all. They're not common. For example, Kemoi Potei Hilches Pigul Ukai Gavne. For example, the details of the laws of Pigul and the like which presently have no practical application. What is the laws of Pigul? Is when you bring the offering in the Pesamikdash in the temple. So the Kohen that actually performs the different services with the offerings, he must have in mind the right thoughts. And if he has in mind to have the sprinkling the blood then for uh, and he has in mind while he's sprinkling that the, that the meat would be eaten in not in the right time, then it disqualifies the cob. Now tell me what what kind of relevance does this have to us today? So why should these laws too be studied ex extensively? And in fact, even more than one studies the order of Hishtalshalus, which can rouse one to love and awe of Hashem. That's that's connects to what we the, the beginning of the letter of this essay that Al Rebbe says that the studying the laws of the Torah gets you to a higher place than even just studying the Ishtal Shalos, even though when you study Ishtal Shalos, what is Ishtal Shalos? It's talking about the creation of the world, talking about the different levels of godliness and how everything is nullified to Hashem and so when you study it in details, when you study those laws, it really moves you, moves you to, to feel law and fear of Hashem and, and, and this 
seems to be a very, very important thing to move you, to elevate you, to connect you. And yet we say that studying the simple laws of the Torah, and again, it's important to have those things, those the study of Ishtal laws, as you mentioned in the previous lessons. But there is something by of studying the Torah, the simple laws, and even laws that have no practical application whatsoever. They still have an advantage that it reaches in a higher place, higher than just studying those um, laws that bring you to love and fear of Hashem. What is this? Why is this? That we shall continue on Sunday, Bezrat Hashem. Have a wonderful Shabbos, and we'll see you on Sunday. All the best. Mm -hmm.